<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hi. We're live at the Cotton Blossom because uh, today is the start of Kimber Bell Embroidery Club. And we are going to be live probably for a couple hours. So bear with us. We are going to make this project today. So if you didn't know about it, now is your chance to learn about the new Kimber Bell Embroidery Club. Okay, can everybody in the store, can y'all see okay? Okay, so we've got people in the store today, and then we've got people watching online. And then we've also broadcasting this live into our private Kimber Bell Embroidery Club Facebook group. So right now, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on our um, our main Facebook page, this is a sneak peek into the new Kimber Bell Embroidery Club. And so we're going to teach how to make this fun project today. Uh, actually, we're just going to walk you through the steps. If you still want this to join the club, it's not too late. If you still want to um, uh, go to uh, and do these designs and get the kit, if you want to do this project, it's not too late, okay? What today's class is and what the Embroidery Club will be for the rest of the year is tips classes. So you can get membership into the Kimberbell Embroidery Club. It's a fabulous 12-month program, and every month Kimberbell will give you the, when you sign up through us, Kimberbell will give you the design. Uh, it's it's a great program. Kimberbell has some great embroidery projects. So uh in this link to this description to this uh, video, you can go and see more about the Kimberbell Club. But those of you that have signed up, um, you know, and you've already got an email from me, and you've got the files, uh, and you should have the PDF instructions. Uh, you should have instructions, fabulous, fabulous instructions that are um, done by Kimberbell. They have step-by-step -step color pictures. So we're going to, this is what you would get if you bought into the club. You get the uh, the instructions, you get the embroidery files, one each month, and you get um, tips, the tips class. So that's what we're going to do today. We're doing it live here on Facebook. Uh, and so if you're watching this later, you can fast forward through some of the boring stuff if you already know what you're doing. If you've done a Kimberbell project before, you know that their instructions are fantastic. But we want to go over, since this is the first one, we want to go over some of the basics. So this is the super duper basics. If you are having trouble getting into um, the Kimberbell website, um, we've seen people having to reset their password because they forgot their password. No worries, you can go back and watch this class later. And you can fast forward through all this homework stuff that I'm going to go over uh, because you won't need this. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to walk you through. We're not actually going to make it, but we're going to walk you through making this adorable pillow. Okay, so hi, hey, Layla, hey, everybody, good morning, hey, hey, guys. Okay, so if you're just joining us, we are going to make this pillow today. It's a round pillow from Kimberbell. Okay, so this is all embroidery, but then there's sewing as well. Um, all right, so let me welcome Lisa. Come on, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good, good. We're making it. We're going to get, we're going to, um, Lisa has made this one. This is the five by seven size. So the beauty of these Kimberbell projects, and if you're a part of the club, you've gotten the five by seven and the eight by twelve size. Yes. So each month they will, if there's more than one size, they will give you both files. If you have a, so you need a five by seven hoop or larger. And so if you have the larger hoop, you should make it because look how oh it looks so good yes. in the larger size. So that is the um, eight by twelve or larger size. So. so it's Look at the difference in the embroidery size. Very pretty. Uh, and it's not too late to get a kit. So those of you that have purchased kits, you pre-ordered kits, those are ready for pickup. And each month we will create a kit and you need to order those. They're pre-ordered. you got to order them at least two weeks ahead of time in order to get them for class. So the people that purchased these two weeks ago, they're ready. And if you purchased it yesterday, it might not be ready today, but it will be ready probably tomorrow. But all the pillow forms are in stock and... Uh, that was one thing we were waiting on from Kimberbell. And next week is Pot of Gold. We'll Pot talk gold. about that. We um, we were supposed to do one class in January and one in February, but the ice storm threw everything off. The Mississippi ice storm, which we had, you know, this much ice, you know, it throws, everything off. throws everything off. So here we are, February 2nd. So we're going to do one this week and one next week. And we're going to make the Pot of Gold jar topper and gift tag to next week. 
So this is week one. So bear with us. Let's do some homework. I mean, let's do some housekeeping. Housekeeping. Okay, housekeeping. Let's look at Kimberbell instructions and what we are going to be looking for, Lisa. So if this is, I'm going to change my camera over so that you can see the Kimberbell instructions. So if this were page one, it's not, this is page three. Page one and two are just color uh, pictures. If this is page one, what is this telling us as we go through our Kimberbell projects? So the most important information on here is going to be the fusible backing that you want to put behind your fabric before you start and also um, your seam allowances. So in this project, all the seam allowances are one quarter of an inch. So for those of us who are not quilters, this is this is a little <laughs> more challenging um, to, to start thinking in quarter inch. For all of you quilters, this is the perfect project because you're just gonna stick with that quarter of an inch seam. Um, and then the other is there is a water soluble bobbin thread um, step in here oh. so it's very specific it's an easy step and then d we're going to remind you to take it out so do we have that in stock do we have water soluble bobbin thread let's check and see because you're going to need that so that's real interesting um water soluble bobbin so what what issues could you come in <laughs> What Not, issues could you have if you didn't change it out? It will all dissolve if you get water <laughs> anywhere close to this. So the, the biggest one is, are going to be these two flowers so that you can get the beautiful um, fringe effect going on. Right here. And so that's what you want. Oh, sorry. Right. There's, there's the fringe. 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 That's a technique we're going to learn today. Fun. So that's what you need that's for... What you need. The, the, that's what you need the water soluble bobbin for. Exactly. If you don't change it out, the rest of your embroidery will fall apart. And the good thing is they, they put these side by side uh, and the steps are side by side. So you put it in uh, and then you're going to do two steps and then you're going to take it out. So safer. that's the good thing. Okay. Water soluble. Um, be gone. Okay. It's wonderful. It looks suspiciously like regular bobbin yes, thread. Yes, it does. So definitely marked your bobbin. Um, I know I just took one whole side of my bobbin and just marked it all black so I knew not to mix it up. Okay, so we're making this project today. Uh, we're going to walk you through step by step. And if you are um, late to the game, it's okay because you can still join the club. Uh, and this is this is the first project. Yes. Okay, so I'll say that multiple times um, throughout this broadcast because I know people were hopping on. Uh, and join in us. Okay, but if you want to watch this later, it will be in our private Facebook group. So in order to get this class so that you can watch it later, you will need to join the club. And it's $99 until tomorrow. So if you want to save and get all 12 months, it's only $99. You get all 12 embroidery designs. You get all 12 um, PDF um, instructions. Okay, so let's go back to page two. Okay, so Kimberbell instructions are Fabulous. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Okay, this is on every single every single kit. Kit. This or is just set instruction set. Your um, icons. what do the icons mean? So Kimberbell does what with icons? They've got fabulous icons, and you'll see them in all the instructions. They're going to be off to the side, so you're going to know. Here's that bobbin icon where you really need to pay attention and change out your bobbins. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got visible thread color, so match your thread color to your top fabric. Um, this one here is just a, a slash color box. So you can use any thread that, as I put it, you can see uh, in a sense that that is light colored for the project, but you, that's probably going to be an outline thread. You're going to want to cut near it or, or something um, slightly later on in the project, you might want to be able to find that thread again. So that was a good one to know. And then you've got your, your ironing, um, well, that just makes icons sense. and then you have all your color thread. Charts. Okay. The pressing cloth. Yes. Okay. That's a big deal. Big deal because we do not want to press directly onto our, our fabulous embroidery. So if you know, when you see that icon, you want to use a pressing cloth, right? So yes. which pressing cloth do we have? We do. We have one. We've got the OE 
OESD one. OESD. Yes. Worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. $5.99. Okay, so these are great. Yes. So if you see that little icon that looks like an iron with a green the fabric brand. underneath it, but no, you're going to use a pressing cloth because we do not want to melt our beautiful, beautiful threads. All right, so part of the Kimberbell Club, did y'all get, did everybody get the thread colors that Lisa suggested? Did y'all yes. get those in an email? Yes. Okay, so that is um, suggested thread colors, and we now carry the full line of exquisite dime thread. Lisa's so fabulous. Look at this. Okay, so she's got all the beautiful threads. I mean, just look at them. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so all these threads, um, as part of the club, you get a list of the threads that she has suggested. And it really does make a difference The because you want to choose a pink and a peach and a light pink. And you think, oh, that's a big deal. It makes a difference. And her, her pillar turned out so pretty because she spent a lot of time choosing the correct color threads. Okay, yeah. because yeah, Kimberbell Bell will tell you in the instructions, it says light pink, peach, um, but if you don't have an eye for color, uh, Lisa has done that for us, okay? And she picked, and she's got a number for each uh, thread, so like the peach she chose is ES505, so you get the idea, um, makes a difference. Okay, the so. The only one I've got in there that's not is the Robeson Anton and that particular color yes we it, we do not dime does not have it and yet it is a gorgeous color we've used it in several projects um so pick up that Robeson Anton it's fabulous especially that color it this is 1006 this is color spruce spruce mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic color yeah so we carry the full line of Robeson Anton as well yes. so it's kind of the creme to the creme of embroidery thread um, dime exquisite thread is a, a more economical <laughs> version so you pick your poison if you've got Robus and Anton at home uh, she gave you the conversion chart for that as well so uh, you have two options uh, for beautiful embroidery here at the Cotton Blossom and we'll help you step by step okay back to the fabulous PDF instructions all right so Lisa there's two sizes that they could do today right yes um, you've got the, the large eight and a half by 11 hoop size, and then you have the smaller one, which is little beauty. It's super cute though. Oh my gosh. The fringe is so cute. Okay. So this is the five by seven embroidery size embroidery. and that's the eight by yeah. 12, but I'm confused. The pillows end up so the same see. size. The exterior diameter is going to be the same size. So they're, they're, making this ruffle bigger for the small insert okay. and then it's a smaller ruffle for the larger um, embroidery circle. Super. Makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Can you turn the light back on? Can I ask you yes. yes. Please ask so a question. large size will still fit on the pillow? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's just the embroidery center is what um, is the dilemma. Okay. If you only have a five by seven hoop, your center is what's going to be small, but the exterior right. is the same. And if you buy a kit, we've given you enough fabric to make the larger size. Even if you have a smaller hoop, if you wanted to use the smaller one, uh, you got enough fabric to do either size. And that will be the case for all the kits throughout the entire um, year. If you purchase a kit, you can get, um, if you've got a larger hoop, you're obviously going to want to do the larger project size. So, uh, we've supplied enough fabric to make the, the bigger one if there is an option next month there's only one size there's well there's a narrow jar there's narrow a narrow jar. jar and a wide math jar but it doesn't matter what hoop size you use Still as long as you have a five by seven so there's mul usually multiple sizes either way we've given you enough fabric or supplies to make the larger um, the larger size in the uh, project okay project. back to the instructions here, let me give a better a better shot of that. Okay, page one. What is it saying that we need for today? The fusible backing and the medium cutaway stabilizer along with our fabrics. So we're going to have a fusible backing that's going to go directly onto the backside of our fashion fabric and just iron on to give it a little more stability. And then we're going to hoop with a medium cutaway stabilizer. So we used a uh, baby lot no baby show lot. mesh. Yes. So 
everything you need. Throw me those stabilizers over there. We use this no-show mesh, but they call for it, which is fine. And But you could also use, okay, there's the no-show mesh. Fusible mesh. Oops, that's fusible. That's you don't fusible. need fusible. There's the cutaway. Uh, cutaway soft is the other option, okay? And this is um, a very supple, stiffer. This is more, um, has more substance to it, the cutaway soft. It's soft, but it's thicker. Does that make sense? Versus the no-show mesh is what we've used here. It's very pliable. Yes. So you pick your poison whether you want it to be stiff or pliable. And it's just a personal preference. I think they're going to both do well. Wouldn't you agree? I do. I, and I actually think the, the stiffer one might actually do a little bit better with the embroidery. But it's, mm -hmm. it is a matter of how supple do you want that back that backside in in the center of your because it's going to stay really in don't. your pillow it's going to stay in your pillow mm -hmm. you can't go wrong um and then there's extra heavy cutaway mm -hmm. um so here's just the difference this is super stable i don't recommend super stable just because it is an extra heavy weight do you see how it's just three ounce so quick tip on um baby lock stabilizer it will tell you the ounces on there. This is a three ounce, and then on here somewhere it tells this is a a two ounce. You see how it says a two ounce medium cutaway. So this would be perfection because it's soft. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we just throw no show mesh in the hoop, and that's what we've done today. So let's. Um, I'm gonna take you over to the PowerPoint. Okay. So here's where. Uh, it tells you dark pink, light pink, the different colors. All the, all the colors. Very, very self-explanatory. Okay. Uh, the first step, and so this is not what you'll get in your instructions. Actually, the stuff that you get in your PDF instructions is going to be better than what you see up here. But you get a, this is a sneak peek on how uh, great their instructions are. Number one, you see the little iron? It says iron... The fusible backing. So what is fusible backing? That's the same thing as like SF-101. Uh, we carry that under the counter. It is a uh, interfacing. Okay? So you don't have to... Um, fusible back. Yeah, SF-101. And then we hoop the medium weight cutaway. Step two. Step three, load the embroidery file. I mean, it just couldn't be any simpler. Okay, let's... Tell me about what you're doing here. So th the biggest importance is you're going to hoop your stabilizer into your, your hoop, put it in the machine, and I, there's a tendency to go put your fabric in there. Don't. Uh, definitely stitch out the... Um, do your first stitch out, which is going to be where you need to locate that fabric. Okay? And let it go through its whole step. Once it's shown you the two outlines and you can see they've put it in black then the next step is to tape your fabric and so we tend stitching onto the stabilizer. we're stitching the stabilizer first to give you those placement <laughs> and that's very important um because yes did i screw up yes i did uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um i put the fabric basically in the center of my hoop. I just, you know, we all get zoomies and we all want to go on to the, the first step. We want to get started. So be sure to put that placement line. The very first thing you do, put that placement line down. Otherwise you're going to have, and you'll, you won't see it in the end, but there is a set of lines right here. And that's why you want them on. You want them on there. So where, you know where to put that fabric and you're getting it in the right spot so you don't accidentally or almost go off the edge with your stitching. So placement line. Placement, placement line, line is placement first. Line. Placement line. That's one okay. of the big yes, things. Okay, yes, Karen, question. I was going to ask, you know, on the two lines that, that you showed, mm -hmm. is, yes. that, is that going to be on the five and a half and the eight and a half? It is on both of them, five and a half and eight and a half. The placement line is, is in its size four your five and a half and your eight and a half on your file. Um, but the first step is that placement line on your stabilizer. Do it. 
Right. The question Don't was, if you can't hear online, is that the um, is the placement line going to be the same for the five by seven and eight by twelve? Is that what your question was? Yeah, uh, uh, it's actually going to be bigger for the eight by twelve. Same place, but bigger. Is that? Did I answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what you're seeing here, and I didn't load the embroidery design. You have it. I do. Okay. So Kimberbell tape. All right. Do you see how? Look, look here on step number four on your instructions. Do you see how the stitch center line placement, there's a little machine icon with the number one. And do you remember what Lisa was talking about with the, uh, the, the square with the lines go through it? So that means it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. matter. Okay. It, it just needs to show up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to show that up on your stabilizer so that you can um, put your fabric in the correct place. Uh, and then, so note how there is a different step number and a machine step number. Kimberly Ball's made it very simple if you just look at all the numbers. Exactly. Okay. So let's pull up the embroidery design. So let me go back over to my camera here. Okay, so we're going to work on the Solaris today. I'm going to go to the pocket and I'm going to go to Lisa's USB. And where did you save it in here? Is your dealer exclusives? There it is. Yep. All right, you want to thread the machine for me while I pull that up? Okay, I'm going to say set. And I'm going to answer, while you're doing that, I'm going to answer some questions that we have online. Absolutely. All right. Look how fabulous this is that, um, you know, it walks us, through walks us through step by step. The And it tells me how long it's going to take. Okay. So if we were to stitch this in the store, and one of the questions is it will be sewn in the store. Well, the stitch out will take uh, forever and ever. <laughs> 47 minutes. Okay. We must have this on 300 stitches a minute. It's 30,000 yeah. stitches. Is that wow. right? Yeah. Wow, let me yeah. see what my speed is because, oh yeah, it's at a thousand stitches a minute. So we're not going to take up your time today by changing threads. We're going to show you the steps. Uh, our goal is to show you the pitfalls. Um, this is very, very easy, but Lisa has done this. And three so what times. she, three times. And so <laughs> what she wants to show you is how to make your life easier. Um, what she had issues with or what she had questions about. So we're going to, we won't spend 47 minutes changing threads for y'all today. We'll just say by the magic of television, we will skip over all of the stitching. So once you get it in the hoop, once you get it taped down, uh, that is where, um, and then we get to the sewing version. So right. this project is embroidery and sewing. and sewing and sewing. Yeah. Yes. So best of both worlds. All right. Susie Sherman says she's finally watching. Hey, Susie. Uh, and somebody says, will the club be sewn in store or virtually each week? Okay, so each time. So it's once a month, except this month is unusual because we're doing two this month. Uh, but it will be, uh, we will have a lecture. And so we've got a bunch of people here in store. You can't see them, but there are uh, people in store watching the tips class so that you can raise your hand. People are taking notes. What I recommend for y'all for next month if you don't have this printed out, bring this with you so that you can make notes on your actual um, PDF. Okay. And so I look at Naomi, <laughs> head of the class. Naomi's already, oh my gosh, Naomi, do you have that already in a binder? We'll have to show her binder. She has it in, oh my goodness. She's printed this out. She's got it in a binder. Uh, head of the class, Naomi. <laughs> Naomi just signed up last night. So major kudos to Naomi. Oh my goodness. Okay. I love that. Um, but look how great the instructions are. Okay. Oh my gosh. She's got um, even sheet protectors. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is fabulous. Okay. And so look how amazing. Okay. So no way. Oh, and a place to take notes. Okay. Thanks, Naomi. <laughs> so if you do this next week, print this out, join the club, print out your PDF so that you can make notes along the way. Okay, so did I answer everybody's questions? Patsy, hey, I'm glad you're watching. I see Layla's here. Good morning, everybody. Okay, good deal. Let's move on to, um, yeah, 47 minutes. I'm going to change back over. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we are not going to change threads 47 times. But what we'll do is we'll stop when we get to... Um, We'll pause and we'll talk about these little flowers here yes. because that that 
is something that is a relatively new te technique to a lot of people. Okay, so we're stitching on the Solaris, and so it gives us lots of information. Uh, this design is uh, basically 8 by 8, and so your fabric piece is going to be 9 by 9 that's in your uh, project kit. In the project kit. Okay, when I'm ready to stitch, all I got to do, I hope I have a bobbin in here. Okay, so we chose brown thread. Just to, just to sh so you can see the, <laughs> the, the placement. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't it was, matter. It does not matter. It was the square with the lines. Yes. Through. It does not matter. It does not matter. Um, and the real advantage is the outer one is going to be your cutting line for the whole project. And then that inner one is going to be um, hidden. And it'll help you with your, your stitching line, depending on how you do it. So it's so about it's to go do... around twice. Oh, yeah. okay. So say that again. The outer line is this, what? And, of course, now it's doing the outer line. Go. So this is the outer line. That's going to be your cut line for the whole project. That that one that is stitching. Okay. You stitch the inner line, which is basically going to end up being your uh, stitching line later on. So do you think that's a quarter inch between those two lines? It is. <laughs> the outer line is going to end up being a cutting line. So we just cut right along that outer line. That's Show that on the camera so the people online can see. Great question. So show it after you've stitched. You've, you've cut it. You've cut it. Okay, so this is taken I've out of the hoop. It. Yeah, I've taken it out of the hoop, and I have cut it, and it's going to be this outer line is that stitching, is that is this one right here. So It's hard to see. You're going to cut it. I can't get yeah, it. Yeah, because that one did not get stitched in brown. Oh, okay, but this is the 5 by 7 size. Is this why it's so the, the line is yeah, further in? Yeah, I did in? it to show the difference between the 5 by 7 and the 8.5 by 11. So you can see. Oh, look at the difference, difference. in that mm -hmm. versus that. Okay. So that's why if you're doing the 5 by 7, it's going to look different. I'm, this glad, will be the size. I'm glad we're showing that. And this okay. is the 8.5 by 11. And that's sure. what the lines will be much closer together. There it is. Oh, okay. There it is. Very cool. Okay. So the lines will. Be very close together with right. the five, the eight by twelve size. Excellent. Okay. 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 Now we go to our PowerPoint again. All right. So now is when we would place the fabric, right? So right. step five in your instructions: place the center fabric right side up, covering the placement lines. Covering the placement lines. Do you see how they've folded the corner up? That is just for your reference. Somebody asked that, and should we fold the corner up? Well, that's a good question, but obviously no. They've just folded it up so you can see that you're doing the right and the wrong side of the fabric. But your fabric is going to cover all four sides. And tell us about tape with Kimberbell tape. The taping with Kimberbell, you're going to basically tape exactly where Kimberbell wants you to tape because they have figured out where their foot is going. And so you shouldn't have any problems with it, you know, interfering with uh, grabbing the foot or anything like that. So we have, here's Kimberbell tape open. Oh, yes. And Kimberbell tape there. Yes. Get you some more light All right, there. light is good. And so Kimberbell tape, um, worth its weight in gold. Don't be ashamed to use Kimberbell tape. The needle, <laughs> you can't, can't use too much. And your needle can stitch through it, and it won't gum up your needle, and, um, you know. And you can write on it. You can what? write notes. <laughs> you can write on it. So. <laughs> oh my gosh! Who knew? That's great. Okay, and so when you see it, you had a great tip. When we, those of you that did the free preview class, okay. So when they say tape here and here, they also mean along the bottom, on all four sides, right? Because here's look at page the next step. They've got it on all four, all four sides. sides. Okay, what does the yellow mean? The yellow font. If they've used the uh, a yellow highlighter somewhere, definitely pay attention. So for those of us who like to go zooming through instructions, when you see that yellow highlighter, take a moment, read the instructions. There's something probably really important. With this one, uh, it says, do not trim the fabric at this time. A lot of times we will put something down. We will put a, a, a stay stitch down. Um, a tack down 
and we'll come back and we will cut towards, you know, right along the tack down line so that um, we can then do like a, a cover stitch over the top. You're not going to be doing that here. You need all that fabric. So don't trim it off at this time. Yes. So great tip. Okay. But that's why it's in yellow, correct? That's yeah. why they put it in yellow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, now is when you would have fabric on there. Oh, we don't have a fabric square, but if you were putting fabric in your hoop, you're gonna do that now. And then here we go, step number seven. And this is where we're gonna go lightning speed. So seven, uh, let me get to my PowerPoint. You're gonna start your, with your color stitching. Um, there are uh, numerous changes. You're starting with the, the green leaves, and you'll have a page in your instructions that is going to show you exactly um, what's going to be done and what color, what step it refers to, and what it's going to be doing. So it's easy to watch and see how it's being done. All right, so 13, 14, 15. Now when you get to 16... 16 and step, 17. No, actually, step, yeah, 16 and 17. So, yes, that's when you've got. Do you see the icon with the bobbin up to this next to the 17 with a little water droplet next to it? Back, go back to your instructions because it'll tell you exactly what that means. But what does that mean? Water soluble thread in the bobbin. Um, so, you'll have done one portion of the peach stitch out, then you're going to change out your bobbin to the um, water soluble. Mm -hmm. And I've got water soluble on a bobbin and I have um, marked it so that I know it's water soluble and to not okay. get it mixed up with everything else. Let me see how you marked it. I I marked the whole thing. Oh, and I don't know. <laughs> Could, did, is your machine read that though? That worries me. I would just put an X on there because you know how your machine has a sensor? Does it read when the bottom and low sensor? I will have to check. <laughs> I didn't have problems. I did not have problems. So I would just put a um, an X on okay. it. Okay. So that, yeah. Do the X. Do the X. I'm worried your machine, our fabulous baby aunt machines have a bobbin low sensor. And so it knows when your bobbin's about to run out. And so if you put a whole thing on the back. But you never ran out, so you don't know. No, and I think I actually put it downward, which was kind of strange. I don't know why I put it downward. Um, so yeah. if you did, I just knew I needed to make sure that I took it out. So one okay. side, one side. They, yeah. And that is your... Um, she's used the Wonderfill. Get it under the camera. This is Rinse and Gone. Looks just like regular bobbin thread. Just a heads up, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, 17 and 18. That's right. where we're at. Okay. We're zooming. We're zooming. We're already on step number. Um, let's go to 19. Okay. But now. Go back to your bobbin, your regular bobbin thread. Because now it's going to do the stitching that will tack down all of the fringe stitching that you just did. So that's really super important that when you get to that step, change your bobbin back out. And you could miss it if you, on step number 19, you see at the top where there's a, just a regular bobbin. bobbin thread, you go back to the icon chart and that will tell you that it is the, um, a regular bobbin, but it, it's in highlighted. Again, it's highlighted in yellow. <laughs> watch the, <laughs> when you're zooming through, watch that, that uh, highlighted yellow set of instructions. So once again, we're on step number 19, but look at the step for the machine step is number 15. So our, in the steps on your machine, so just a quick uh, tip on, let me go to the camera with, okay, so we haven't gone that far, but do you see on the steps, the spool steps. We're on minute. We're we're still on back on minute one of forty seven, and we're on step two of seventeen. So up here is going to tell you your step number out of how many, okay, and what stitch number. But 
this is the step number we're on, and then you get a fabulous preview of what you're about to stitch out. So I'm going to simulate going to step number 19, because that's where we are in the PDF and the instructions. And you get a little preview every time of what you're about to stitch out. The baby locks are going to walk you through step by step. And show you where you are on that stitch Show out. you where you are. Okay, here we are. Is this the, is it 13? 13. 14. Those are the ones 18. that you're going to be stitching with the water-soluble bobbin thread. Oh, wait. We're so, on, okay, yeah. And See, now we're back. We're up to 15. We're on step number 15. So I went to step 15. So step 15. And then. Out of 17 steps in the stitch out. So see how there's a little machine and a number 15, and then it tells you what color to change it to. Step number 16. Tack down line. Or that, that's going to be the fringe inner circle, and that's where you're going to go back to that bobbin thread. It's going to tack all that down so that you can create the fringe. You have to have that tack down so show the fringe. So let's look at, we had a question that she uh, didn't understand this. So that's, this is, fringe is a whole new technique. So let me start with um, where you change the water soluble bobbin. Mm -hmm. So step number 13 on the machine. So you just follow the stitches. Uh, so step number 12 is the okay. little... Step 12, they're going to stitch out the little flower, the, the pink flower flowers. petals. So look at number Peach 16. So, so number 17 is where you want to change to a water-soluble bobbin. So you're not going to do anything different. You have nothing uh, that you have to do at this point as far as cutting, right? No, yeah, and no bobbin changes or anything until step 17, embroidery step 13. Correct. And then it's, you're going to change that bobbin thread to the water soluble. And I actually did this. You can use just a, a different thread that you can see, different like a different bobbin thread. If you are doing the five by seven, I do not recommend it. I highly recommend coming in and getting the water soluble because the stitches are so small that it's very hard. I have not even unfringed this one. Wait, wait, I'm not on there. Let me change over to the camera. Okay. So on the 5 by 7 the stitches are so small that trying to figure out the bobbin versus the thread and is just really difficult. So where so is the for water best soluble quality, bobbin? So you haven't fringed that yet? I have not fringed this one yet. And that's so that you can see just how difficult it would be get the water soluble um because on the five by seven these are such small stitches right here that um it's difficult to undo the fringe if you don't have that water soluble to to create that fringe this is water soluble with the and it just comes out oh really okay great so what so you're so saying much easier what you're saying is that you tried it without the water I did. soluble i tried it without water soluble oh and that was harder. And especially in the 5 by 7 it's just really, really difficult to get your fringing. So get the water soluble. It will save you a lot of headaches. Get the water soluble. Whether okay. you're doing 5 by 7 or 8 and a half, the 8 by 11 hoop. 8 by 12. 8 by 12. 8 by 12. 8 by 12. Yes. 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 No, I put topper on this because I was I was experimenting. I didn't find that the topper was necessary. It looked just as good without it as it did with it. But um, like I said, I did this multiple times, so I tried uh, to see. I see, and it 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 didn't make a difference. I didn't find that it made any difference. So topper's not necessary on this project at all. Would you find that? Um, what 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 I've found, and you can confirm or not, is that Kimberbell has tested and retested and quadruple tested and tested with other people. And if it is... Um, if it's necessary, they're going to tell you. Um, I 
I was experimenting because I was doing this multiple times, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see if maybe my machine needed it. Uh, it, it didn't. Uh, it didn't make any difference. So I think that's that magic mm -hmm. of the right uh, backers, your, the correct um, stabilizer when you hoop it for this project. Can I ask probably a question that I missed the answer? Yes, ask a question. question water sure. soluble. When I hear water soluble, I think I'm going to go wash it and it's going to go away. What's the real purpose of the water soluble? Is it going to. You talking about the bobbin thread? Yeah. Yes, just wait and see. It gets really <laughs> exciting. It's about to really, it's about to really get cool. With yeah. the fringe. And with yeah. the fringe. With yes. the fringe. Okay, so you're just stitching along. So and it's not that we're going to wash it. Nope. You're going to get it wet, and the bobbin thread will go away, and it will pop out. It will just okay. pop out. Okay, I missed that. So yeah. We yeah. haven't the, gotten there, the, so you the, haven't missed it. Yeah, you haven't okay. missed it. But great question. Great question. Uh, Gwen was asking uh, what the point of the water soluble is and so we're getting there because that is a huge part of this class being able to produce the fringe and make it look good so I didn't realize um, that you tried it without the water soluble but that's so disaster. cool <laughs> total disaster total disaster okay so it can be done but woo, that's that looks challenging uh, it would be much easier if you got it wet and then with a little pin we're not there yet, but this is yet. this is what you'll but want. We're there. Um, right. Because you're not going to wash it. So yeah. Gwen said, if it's wash away, are we going to wash it? So we assume you just throw it in the laundry. No, no, no. It's just a microscopic little area that we're going to get wet. Correct. Because I don't pre-wash my stuff. I don't know I'm going to get hate mail from that. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm a lazy embroiderer. Comments down in the <laughs> comments down below. Make sure comments you on somebody else's Facebook page. No, but a lot of people do, but I don't because I, I like the sheen of it. I like it to look nice. It looks new, it looks new yeah. when you give it away, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so if, uh, and there's somebody in this group, I think somebody, Susie is going to do this for a craft fair. Genius. Yeah. So she wants to give these away and then she wants them to look new. So instead of having to launder all of these that she takes out to the craft fair, uh, we got a solution for that. Yes, yes. question. What are you holding your hand? Okay, this <laughs> is the um, aqua eraser pen. So this pen is um, we just got these. So forget using a Q tip yes. and water because Q tips create lint and then you got lint on your project and then you've got goo on your project. So we brought these in. Lisa said, okay, what's, uh, and I honestly, I said, what's so great about a uh, water soluble? What, what could you use this for? So we brought these in for Brooke's class. She's going to be doing a uh, free motion quilting class. And so she's going to be marking her project with a water soluble pen a lot. And okay. But then if you mark up your quilt with, so Karen, since you're a quilter and if you're marking your pen, your quilt a lot, uh, you've got all these, uh, marks on your quilt and you don't want to have to throw it in the washing machine, but you can take this pen and just drag. It's just like a paintbrush with water in it. In that fold, yeah, yeah, we're going to use that. Yes. Squares to strings. There, yeah, I forget the name. Yeah, uh, the folding pen. We're going to show that here too, because that these are the things that are going to uh, make a difference. Okay, so they do. This is what she uses. It's an aqua erasing pen. It gently removes ink marks, but it also removes the water soluble bobbin, bobbin, thread. bobbin yeah. thread. So let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. So backing it up for just a second so I can show you that icon again. Uh, let's see. 17 and 18. Backing it up. Remember where it says change the bobbin thread to a water soluble visit. So as long as you can follow the instructions, it's like following a recipe. You can do this. Yeah, you can do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that that's the joy of the Kimberbell instructions is um however, you know, <laughs> we tend to like want to toss our manuals out that read the instructions. They're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but we're just trucking along. We're just following the yep. instructions. We're not dissolving anything yet. We're Nothing. not even there yet. Yeah, we haven't taken it. We haven't even taken it off the machine because we've still got two more steps to go, which is the final two colors to oh, finish off the design. 
which is step number 17 is the last step. And the reason I, uh, I know that is because on my machine, it says 15 of 17. So 17, right. we're step number 21 in the instructions, but number 17 in the stitch out. So there's a little the machine. That's my last step That's on last my embroidery. Okay. This is where uh, Lisa, here we are, step number 22 in the instructions. This is where Lisa has. Right. And I found that it was actually easier to do this while it was still in the hoop because you actually had it nice and taut. So it was easier to get it exactly where you wanted it. Um, so leave it in the hoop. That's actually a great idea. It keeps it really nice. And you're just going to use that pen to get the threads on the back, get these threads on the back wet. And then once it gets wet, it releases, and you get this gorgeous fringe going on. Fun. And it all just comes out. And again, if you, trust me, when I did this with just regular thread, you were risking your fringe. Um, so definitely get the water soluble. Get one of these. You will make it so much easier. We do have quite a few projects that are going to have fringe in the next couple of of um, dealer digital dealer exclusives. So it's definitely worth it. We there are a couple of projects that will use this. Point to where you used it. I used it right there on the back of these two flowers. These are the only two flowers on the project that have the fringe. So you just put water in there, dab it on. And that water-soluble bobbin thread will completely dissolve. You go back to the front, and you're just going to brush Head your finger, it. and 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 there it is. There's French. It just magically appears. Fringy. Yes. Okay, so yours has a little bald spot. Ours, what happened there? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I was, you know, and I did not leave that machine's side, so I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Kimberbell's version. Uh, fun, fun little, um, technique. Okay. So that is fringe. There's other ways to do fringe. This is the easier way. The easier way. <laughs> There's other digitizers that have created fringe designs and they're not this easy. Trust, trust me on that. <laughs> That's true. We're making it sound complicated, but here in, not. on the instructions, let's go back to, um, I'll show you what they did. This is step number 22 on your PDF instructions if you're following along. If water-soluble water bobbin thread was used, spray the fringe stitches with water to dissolve the bobbin thread. Well, that's a lot of water. You don't need all that, right? Immediately use a cotton swab or your fingernails to rub the threads. If a visible thread bobbin was used... Okay, so it's showing you if you don't have water-soluble bobbin. So those of Correct. you that have... Pat, Patsy has a great question. She's got a multi-needle. So Patsy has a, a baby lock six needle. Um, and so we don't typically wind bobbins for uh, the multi-needles. We use white. So there's a way that you can do it without having to. Uh, so here on instructions on page number 22, there's a way to do it. Yes. Patsy. And I did great it. Great question. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I did it. There, yeah. Well, it says if a visible colored bobbin thread was used, Use snips or a seam ripper to clip the visible bobbin thread from direction 17 and 18. Be careful not to clip any neutral colored bobbin thread. These stitches hold the fringe in place. Use a cotton swab um, in your fingernails to rub the threads. So you can cut them yourselves or you can use the water-soluble bobbin. You have two options. Two can options. You, can you buy them already well? By what already wound? The water side. No, it just comes on a spool. That's my next question. Wouldn't that be a great idea if it's bobbin thread and it's so special it needs to be already on the bobbin? Yeah, well, I am sure it's some I don't know. It's Wait. there a way to to do it and not have to wind it or anything? The multi needles you can get a bobbin winder for them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but the least expensive way to do it is to wind your own. But say you have a multi-needle and you don't have a bobbin winder, there are ways to do it and it tells you in the instructions. Yes. It doesn't say for a multi-needle, it just says if you don't use the water-soluble bobbin, okay? And that's on step number 22 in the PDF. And I have done fringe where I had to clip the back of it. Yes, yeah, so you know how to do it. Uh, yeah. The water-soluble bobbin thread is the easier way for Much sure. And easier. it looks better too. <laughs> It, um, Much easier. It's just so crisp and clean because there is no, the bobbin thread's gone and you're not having to pick out with the seam ripper. Yeah, and it, clipping them, you can clip too much. Oh, That's yes. That's what I have found out. Yes. Oh, yeah. Gwen is saying, I don't know if y'all can hear, but she's clipped too much by accident. So your fringe doesn't look pretty. Your fringe doesn't look pretty. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So there's two ways to do it. I'm yeah. sorry, I just missed something. Okay. Why would you? Why would you have to um, use the water solid? Question is, is why um, would you? Can you just leave it only what, what, does it make it too bulky? Does it make, I mean, would you see it? I mean. So you're saying, do you have to, are you saying, do you, are your, is your question, do you have to make the fringe? No, no. Do you have to, you know, after you do all of that, if you're going to put it on the back, is what you're, you're either trimming, you don't have the water solid, or the water solid. Why, why just not leave it alone? Because you're never going to see it. It's going to be on the inside. It's not going to fringe. It won't fringe unless you yeah. release. You get rid of the bobbin thread. You have to get rid of the bobbin thread. You have thread to, to get rid of the bobbin thread pull somehow. Yeah. On just those two flowers. Just those two flowers. Just the petals of the flower, not the center. But you release the bobbin thread on the petals. And then all you're left with is uh, the fuzzy... Fuzzy 3D, the fuzzy 3D petals. petals. So it's three dimensional. So in order to get it three dimensional, you've got to release the bobbin thread. Great question. She was saying, can you just leave it alone? But I mean, you could, and you would just have a satin stitch and flower. it wouldn't be yeah. a satin mm -hmm. stitch flower. Yeah. Okay. Betty says, good morning. Hey, Betty, Lucy, good morning. Y'all just now joining us. I don't know. Or you could have commented 20 minutes ago. <laughs> the good news is that you can go back and replay this later. Uh, and uh, so huge tip about the uh, using the water soluble bobbin. Okay, now this is where things get a smidge um, tricky. So let's, oh, oh, here's a great picture. Okay, yeah. turn the hoop to the front and carefully pull the fringe so that you get this adorable um, fringe look. Okay, so onward and upward. So the next step is to to cut all along that outer line, all along that outer edge, and you're just gonna end up with a nice circle. Okay, so this is actually the, the larger circle. Um, I just embroidered a smaller so that you can see the difference between the two. So you are going to just cut all this off and you'll end up with a circle. And you wanna show it on the camera so they can sure. see. So you've, you've cut it, took it out of the hoop at that point. I took it out of the hoop and I just trimmed all the way around. So again, you're going to see where you trim that mm -hmm. outer line all the way around. Yep. Just this outer line all the way around. I'm going to put it under this camera. How about that? Okay. So see the second line? You're just going to trim that right there along that outer edge. Just cutting the fabric off. Cut it and off. And you're cutting... The threads or no? Um, I cut up to the threads. I did not cut the threads because you're going to be manipulating it quite a bit to put the ruffle on, and that's going to keep everything nice and pretty for you. So it's it's like a stay stitch just around your edges, and it will keep it all nice and pretty while you're manipulating the the um the ruffle. Oh, big tip. Okay, so I'm glad I asked that. Cut close to the stitches without cutting the stitches. Yes, close to the stitches, don't cut the stitches. Okay, great tip. Okay, so that is, and then set the pillow center aside for later use. Yep, so and we're now we work on the, um, the, the ruffle. The ruffle. So in your kit, if you purchased a kit or if you were gonna pick up a kit, it's blue fabric like this, and there's a right and a wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> right sides together. <laughs> so, yes. So, um, back before, it was like half down, half up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you have 
you saw a tack down stitch on 18. Okay, let's go back because somebody has a question about step number 18. So, oh, is this what you're talking about on step number 20? Um, step number 16, stitch the flower nine fringe tack down line. So, is I don't know. Uh, that, yeah. yeah, that's the that is the the tack down stitch is that inner stitch that's going to hold the fringe. If you don't do that, and and that's the thing, um, you can't just make any flower design a fringe design. It has to have a special inner tack down line to hold those fringe stitches that were made. Um, so that's why it says the tack down line. That the machine does it. The machine it just does, does it. it for it you. It does it. So. Uh, that's a great question because um, tack down stitches in all other language is like we're tacking down fabric or something, right? right. All this is doing is tacking down the uh, the thread. So I could see how that uh, would be confusing. But great question. That is why I'm so glad you're here to ask mm -hmm. questions like that because people at home are going to have the same type same of questions. questions. Yes. So if you have questions, chime in, and we will um, answer them for you. All right, so back to, okay, so that was on, she was asking about step number 20 and in your instructions in the PDF. Okay, so if you don't have these, if you're watching later, no worries. You can still get the instructions and all of this from us. You can still join the club. Okay. So onward to back, okay, we did step number 23. And so if you're following along with the PDF instructions, we're on step number 24. If you don't have this, no worries. You can still get it. All right, now we're on to part two, which is sewing. Sewing. So if you don't have a sewing machine, here at the baby at the Cotton Blossom, we have fabulous baby-like sewing machines. <laughs> so you can get a sewing machine. You can... Um, it helps to have some certain feet. So let's quickly go over the feet that might be helpful when you are sewing today. So I used my quarter inch foot on my sewing machine. Um, again, I do a lot of seams that are five eighths or a half. I don't do a lot of quarter inch. I haven't gotten into quilting, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that quarter inch, um, oh, wait, this stitch in the I am... I really like the quarter inch foot mm -hmm. um, because, or any of like the, you've got the stitch in the ditch. That's the stitch in the ditch. Yeah. Head. I yes. like the stitch in the ditch foot. too because if you are eyesight challenged, these little lineup feet are just fantastic. Um, but the, let me find mine. I've lost your, she's handed me her quarter inch foot and I've lost it. The quarter inch foot comes with most of the baby lock machines. Yes. And we can get you a chair if you want to sit. Okay, quarter inch feet. Change the camera so you can see what we're talking about. There's a large variety of quarter inch feet. This one, you like it? I do. I love it. Um, because you've got this nice bar over here to line up your project with. And especially on a round project like this you really want to get it lined up before you hit that needle and so this gives you a nice surface to line and move and line and move again a reminder for those of us who are not used to quarter inch uh, seams this was fantastic it did it did all my seams beautifully and I had that wonderful edge to line it up to and know that I was getting it right where I needed to be so that I find has been one of the best things I have purchased. Um, my sewing, my, my baby lock was a, the entry model and I came in and bought a whole bunch of extra feet and I am really enjoying this quarter inch foot a lot. Um, it's improved a lot of my and stitching. What number is that? Is it, is it one with the blade on it? This is the one with the blade. Can y'all see? Yeah, it's kind of dark up there, but it is the one with the blade. So if you've been to any of Dorinda's classes here at the Cotton Blossom, she doesn't like the one with the blade. And again, I'm not a quilter. So for me, this was what, what 
came in my huge <laughs> accessory uh-huh. kit that I bought for my, my machine. Um, and I have really enjoyed it. But I know Baby Lock makes like multiple quarter inch mm-hmm. feet. So, and each one is slightly different for the project you're going to be doing. This one worked great for the, for this particular project because I had that edge to line it up with and stitch and get it perfect going all the way around. Because that round round is a challenge. Round, round is, is a challenge. challenge. Um, I don't care who you are. Round is a challenge. I don't know the number of the foot. It's the quarter inch foot with a blade. It came with your, you have the Aventura. It came with your machine. Did it come on the chorus? Came on the chorus. Yeah. And Gwen, you've got this foot. Um, you've got the compact digital dual feed foot. Yeah. So this is what you're going to want to use. So if you've got this um, compact digital dual feed foot, you can get the interchangeable soles. Right now I've got the stitch in the ditch sole on here, but this is, you can do, um, get the quarter inch sole for the stitch in the ditch sole, sort of stitch in the ditch foot. Uh, what I like about the compact digital dual feed that you've got and that comes on the Solaris and the Chorus and the Ballad is that it's got a conveyor belt. It's walking, but it's meant for quilting. But on projects where I just kind of need a little extra um, oomph, that conveyor belt will pull the fabric through from the top and the bottom. And then you can put your, I know you probably got it. Do you get the quarter inch sole? So it, you, it, your machine, uh, Gwen had a question about her course. She has a course. She's got this foot. She's also got the one that, um, this comes with just about every baby lock machine, the one with the um, blade. We call it a blade. It doesn't cut. doesn't cut. Right. <laughs> it's just a nice wall. You would put that on at this point. Yeah, I do. I do like using this. And it's just pick your poison. This is meant to be a quilting, but a lot of times I will, um, because I love that it pulls. If I got multiple layers of fabric, it pulls it through. Uh, but sometimes I'm a, a lazy stitcher, and if this is handy, I'm just going to throw this on my machine. They both work just fine. Okay. Uh, and then I, I use this um, for a lot of things, especially top stitching. This is my stitch in the ditch sole, uh, and I'll show y'all later how I top stitch with that, with this foot. Okay, so, and then the zipper foot. When did you use the zipper foot? That's at the last step? That's that's towards the end as we're putting the zippers into the, to make the backside of the, the pillow. Yes. So, yes. Here, I'm going to, is that one? There you go. <laughs> the problem <laughs> of, of sitting in these is you want one really, really <laughs> We're sitting in these fabulous quad these chairs. We're sitting up right now. And so Lisa was down on the floor a second ago. <laughs> so glad you came up to join me. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint because this is where we're on step number one of part two. So if you're following along with the PDF uh, and if you don't have it, you can grab it. This is the wrong side of the fabric that you're looking at. Yes, wrong side of the fabric. This is the... Um, ruffle and the definitely pay attention to well, luckily this is a tube that you're on the correct side of the fabric and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to stitch the ruffle um, you're going to put them right sides together and you're going to stitch that end and I the first time I did this I I do a seam and I look at it and go you know what I'm going to pink it so I pinked it um, just because I don't like raw edges. It's just me. I just don't like raw edges. So I pinked it and right, show that again. Okay, this is the ends you paint. Yeah, I paint with painting the ends shears. With painting shears. And we have some really nice shears. Again, um, her painting shears are nicer than mine. So this was what <laughs> we have these. This is what happens we have these, when you play with toys here. Um, these fabulous painting shears. And they're purple and pink. How fun is that? Okay, so you paint the edge. I paint just the so edge, wouldn't... just so it wouldn't come unraveled. I because I like but the clear edge. The on the other edges, I went ahead and I used my baby lock serger to serge all the edges because on my first project, like I said, I made three of these, and I found that as I was manipulating the um, gathering for this ruffle. 
I was really doing a lot of damage to that edge. So I went ahead and I searched beforehand and then went back to the instructions and did my um, basting for the, the ruffle. Uh, this is another one of those where it probably said in the instructions and I didn't pay attention because why would I read more than one line? And, <laughs> you know, I know how to baste. Yeah, just go baste it. Make sure that you are basting, putting your your bobbin thread in the right location. So what right, you want to so do. Backing it up. Okay. So you stepped oh, forward. Let's go back to. Oh, let's go back to this. this. Step number two. Step number two. All you did was sew. I sewed the ends together and then I pinked them. Okay, then I step. pressed the seam open, just like it says. Okay, so you're on step three and there's a little iron. iron. How nice yep. is that? Am I? Okay, here we go. Now, right side of fabric, you're going to, this is where I stopped and I searched because I learned on the first one that by spending so much time getting that, um, ruffle all gathered, I was really pulling apart my fabric. So this is where I stopped and I just went ahead and I searched all my pieces. But yes, question. Yes, you can zigzag it or zigzag your edge or pink your edge. But I was finding that, you know, it really needed a little more stability as you're you're really pulling the the, the right. ruffle through just a lot of hand manipulation so of this is it. step number if you're following along at home step number uh four in your pdf instructions we're on part two and step number four lisa surged added, everything <laughs> surged the edges so it's not that is not in the instructions that's just an extra uh you don't have to but she found it helpful step right yes okay so if I am new to sewing and quilting, I would say what is, and I only embroider, which used to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty much the case. What in the world's a basting stitch? A, the basting stitch is a really long stitch. You're going to turn your machine to a four on mine, which is your long, long stitch. Um, I used to just use a different colored thread for my basting. Now I use two different colored threads. So I'm going to use a one color in my bobbin and one color in my top thread so that I know when I go back to release those, what thread I need to clip. So I used a green on top, a black in the, in the bobbin, and then you want to make sure that you are stitching Great. Okay, this is yeah, the top. That's the top. Because we've got right. Actually, this is my top thread. This is my bobbin thread in black. And let's see if I did this one right. I did one of these wrong. Yes, this one is done right. So you're going to stitch it right side, just like that. I started actually in the middle. And now when you are working on the back side, trying to put this all together, guess what? You've got your bobbin threads up and you can adjust. see them. Hold on, I'm gonna adjust the camera. Yep. Look at those long thread tails. Long thread oh, tails, long. yes. Yes, okay, so that is in the instructions, isn't it? Long thread tails are in the instruction. Let's go I back tend to the instructions. Yeah. Because it's gonna, Okay, so sew, long thread tails. Uh, sew a basting stitch along one edge of the border, a quarter inch from the edge. Back stitch at the beginning of stitching only. And then at the end, you know how we're so accustomed to back stitching when we're done sewing? Don't do it because you need to leave a long thread tail at the end. So let me show you on your machine. So those of you that have um, a baby lock machine, I will show you. A basting stitch okay so we're in embroidery touch off the screen saver I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna go to sewing oh this is you gotta take the embroidery frame off Robin thank you Lisa okay 
there is a built-in basting stitch on a lot of our machines. It looks like this. Step number one is your, if you have a Solaris, uh, and I bet it's the same on the Chorus and other machines, it's a um, 1-08. It is um, a stitch length of five. Do you see down here at the bottom where it says stitch length of five? It is a big, long stitch that we can gather it later. So that is a built-in basting stitch. But if you just, most of our baby locks machines come on to 1-03. Uh, That's just a regular straight stitch, right? Uh, and this machine, do you see how there's two lines at the beginning of this stitch? We'll zoom in. The beauty of our baby locks. And so here's a quick machine lesson. Two lines at the beginning, one single dot at the beginning. This is straight stitch middle. This is straight stitch middle. Do you see the difference? This is two lines versus a single dot. The two lines means when I turn on my automatic reinforcement um, button, when I hit this button, do you see how it turned colors? When I first start to sew, it will automatically do a forward, backward, forward stitch. It will do a reinforcement stitch like we're accustomed to doing when we're sewing. And this one will do a single tacking stitch automatically when you first start to sew. So whether you have that button or not, uh, I bet you somebody out there right now has that button and didn't realize what that does. Did you know that? <laughs> so I'm glad you're here, Maurice and Gail. <laughs> So that's in the instructions. It asks you to do a reinforcement stitch at the beginning, but not at the end. So what you don't want to do, uh, but what you don't want to do is hit this fabulous little button right here. It's the only time you're not going to cut your threads at the end. Okay. So what you'll do is when you're done sewing, you won't hit the cut. You're going to have your fabric in here and you're going to just pull and you're going to get this fabulous long tail that Lisa has created. Now, did you do two basting lines? I did, yeah. It does ask for two basting lines. So, like, the next one is, is do your second one a quarter of an inch over. That's where that quarter inch foot, again, comes in handy because you're just going to line it up with your first set of stitching. So, on the first set of, of basting lines, you're lining it up with the um, outer edge. And on the second one... I just lined it up with the stitching I had just done. Gives you this beautiful set of uh, basting lines, um, side by side, absolutely fantastic. So that's one of the other advantages to that. You um, need two parallel lines. Two parallel lines, and if you can even match up your, if you want to be, you know, over the top, match up your first stitch. To the same location as the one before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but that's just one of those things. One thing I didn't show, let's go back. Gail and Maurice and everybody that's got a machine that's like this, don't don't forget if you choose stitch number three, that's that's a regular stitch, but you need to increase your length. Boom, boom, boom. Five is as long as you can go. So if you've got the automatic one, it does it automatically. I mean, this is the base 1-08 on the Solaris, Solaris Vision, all the Solaruses. I bet you it's the same number on the chorus. But don't forget to increase your stitch length so that it's easier to gather. So we're about to gather. To the magic of television. To the magic of television. Actually, let's go to the instructions. Yes, well, question. So you, you did the first on stitch. You didn't cut your thread there. Correct. You got, you got two. On either stitch line, you don't cut your thread. Don't, you want Not really at the end. Yeah, you're going to pull it, which we never do. We don't ever want long thread tails, but this in this instance, we you do. You want long thread tails. But you do it on both lines? Yes. Let's go back to the instructions. That's a great question. I don't know. But Lisa would know. All right. Yeah, this is the second parallel line. Whoops, let me go back to the PowerPoint so y'all can see. So it's the first one. So the first one is that... Wait, the, I'm on the PowerPoint, so okay. sorry. Nope. So a second row of basting stitches a quarter inch away from the first row. Back stitch at the beginning of stitching only, leaving the tail long at the end. So at this point, we have what Lisa has here in her hands. 
So I've got the two rows of basting stitches right there. Two rows of basting stitches in really long tails. Yes. Really long tails. Both of them. Both of them. Both parallel lines will have two long thread tails. Somebody was asking, do we leave a thread tail on one or the other? It's actually both. But it says that in the instructions. This is the first parallel line. First line, and we're sewing on the right side of the fabric so that we can see it. Second step is a second parallel line, leaving long thread tails on both. Yeah, everybody's asking to see it up close. So I'm going to show, she's showing, uh, Lisa's taking one around. Let me show one on the camera for those of you at home. Oops, let's see, I need to go to the camera. She has her two parallel lines. Don't be confused by the, um, she just did a serger stitch. That's just bonus. You don't have to do that. Nowhere in the instructions does it say to do a serger stitch around the edge of her fabric. She did that just because it was unraveling when she was sewing it and manipulating a lot. She did that to keep her edges nice and neat and tidy. Great idea. Two parallel lines and she left big long thread tails. And how smart is she? She Look, she put tape on her thread tails to keep them separate. Excellent tip. So she's going around, Lisa's going around showing everybody here in the store the different... Um, so I've got, she's got a, a colored bobbin, and then she left her big long thread tail so that she can gather. And she's going to show you here in a second how she did that. So y'all hang tight for just a second. Does anybody have any questions? All right, so somebody online, somebody else didn't know about that button. How great. All right, so that is your automatic reinforcement button. It's on the crescendo. It's on the crescendo. It's on the course. It's on every machine from the, I think the the lyric soprano up, has the automatic reinforcement button. It will do it without you when that button is highlighted. It will do it automatically when you first start to stitch. You don't even have to think about it. And some machines. Uh, we'll do it at the end as well if you've got that little scissor. So come in and let me show you that. Uh, you're not doing that today. But it will do an automatic reinforcement stitch at the end of your stitch when you tell it to. But you got to tell it. I'll show you how to do that. It's super cool. Very nicely. Yes, you have to say very nicely. Here's what I want you to do. <laughs> okay, uh, and, and the other tip here is, and it probably said so, is definitely stitch so that your bobbin thread is on the back. You want that bobbin thread on, on the back, back so of the fabric. Top, yeah. And bobbin it tells thread you that. on the back of the fabric. I hope so. Okay. Gathering. Show me how. Okay. So we got these big long thread tails. Now, what, these big, long thread now tails. what are we going to do? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the side that didn't get attached, um, back stitched, And we are going to just pull. And you're just going to pull lightly, gently. And it starts to get easier, and you're just going to shift that stitch, just that gathering, all the way down your project. And it, you know, it disappears on you. And so you take a little more, you just pull evenly, and you just push it down. So this is what takes a little bit of time and patience, and this um, is what you but it's worth it. About Right. This is where, see how I'm manipulating all that, that fabric. So that's why this edge was getting a little. Was it fraying? Fraying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the serger solved it right away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Cause then you got to put. You'd use the whole bottle to go all the way around. Yeah, all the way around. And then somebody's asking the like fray check. Nah, that would take okay. forever. Uh, if you got pinking shears, you can pink the edges. That'll keep it from fraying. Uh, Lisa had her serger handy, and she's if you've got it on and you got it threaded, zip, zip, zip. 
Um, Mom does that to the edge of all of her quilts because yeah. uh, it keeps the edges neat and tidy when she's putting her binding on. It's just a, a little housekeeping tip. Let me well, go. You can do that to that little stitch around without having to do surgery. Yeah, so that's a great point, Mary. There, your machines a lot. You can do an overcasting stitch, and a lot you can get overcasting foot. You can mm -hmm. do a zigzag stitch zigzag. around the edge. Um, my issue with with that is that my zigzag stitch may or may not um, stay on the fabric. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, Mary's better than me, so she can do it, uh, but. The idea is just to get your, your fabric neat and tidy. Nowhere in the instructions does it say that. That's just Lisa's um, point. Okay, so point. through the magic of television, uh, Actually, we're not going to sit and ruffle this for, no. for 10 or 15 minutes. We will skip ahead in the PowerPoint to the next step. So Actually, let's go back. Oh, you may show on the camera. Yeah, let me, let me show you one more thing. Okay. Um, and that is when you've got this seam done, what you might want to do is press it out and find your other, so your quarters, your quarters, because you're going to need to find the quarters so that once you've got this all ruffled, and I'll show you that, you've got a way to match them up with the quarters. So this will be what ruffled. What do you mean quarters? Well, quarter way around your circle. So just like a pie. And that way you know your ruffle is even and you know where to foo-foo your ruffle. What part needs to be foo-fooed and come out nice and pretty and even. So marking those little sections. And the cool thing is that both ruffles are the same size. So let me give you some math if you've got notes handy the center line is um, the, the if you do this if you put it on your table just like this you're gonna you can measure over from one of the edge and that center line and I just got rid of it So end to end, you're going to be at eight and three quarters. So that center line needs to be at your nine and three eighths center point. So nine and three eighths, and you're just going to take a look at that. And it's just going to be right there at nine and three eighths. So you just pull it. You're going to find that center point. And you can either finger press this or take it over to your iron. Um, I'm an iron fanatic, but for those of you who can finger press, finger press, and then come back and mark those. Because once you start to ruffle, you're going to lose <laughs> that nice pressing that you did. Um, so mark it. And again, if you are into the starch and steam, you may not want to do that temperature sensitive one. <laughs> you might want something that stays a little longer. Or you can do um, a pin, a did really you, large pin. Oh, did you use a marking pin? Is that what you? I used a marking pin. I used the water. Um, that's the the release pin. This is the ink. It that's looks just it. like it. Yeah. It's made by the same company. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay, so marking pin. Marking pin versus water. Okay, like, there this we look go. Very simple. This is what we showed earlier. This is the aqua eraser. It's just a wet paintbrush. And this is a marking pen. This is what everybody needs in their sewing room, a water erasable ink. So the idea is these go together. You can make your marks with this one and erase it with this one. We use this for this and to erase the water-soluble topper and the water-soluble bobbin. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is what you marked it with. Or a yeah. pen. Or a pen. Is that in the instructions? No, they didn't have you mark those. And it becomes very difficult to find out if your ruffle is going to be nice and foo food all the way around mm -hmm. and even. So that was um, definitely mark your quarters because, um, and do it all the way across from here and do another on Told the end. Up. Oh, sorry, I don't have that camera on. Okay. Show it again. Okay. Okay, so 
mark on this side and mark on this side of the ruffle. Uh, because when you go to lay it all out, you're going to want to know top this way. And, and I'll show you what I mean. So um, at any rate, mark those. And like I said, the end to end, the length of this is going to be not uh, 18 and 3 quarters. So the center line will be at 9 and 3 eighths. And then mark all of them. So mark here, which is your center line, and mark the ends, both sides. Mm -hmm. And now you have all your marks ready to go for lining up later on without going, what the heck. Um, okay, great. I have a question on Facebook. Are you basting on the folded area or the raw edge? I think that it's the raw edge. I'm not sure what she means by folded area. But it was never folded. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this is the the raw edge. Raw edge. Except Lisa is is the um, a in the class kid. She's the gotta have clean. Gotta I gotta have, have clean, clean edges. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I have to have clean edges. It's just that's so, that's why yes, I have my surgery. It should be the it should be on the raw edge. But it's Lisa shows raw. how she did it on the. Um, she made it a non raw edge, but yes, on the on the raw edge. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Bobbin threads. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Here we go. Bobbin threads, and again, you're gonna pull these and pull these and pull these and get them all. All the way down as you go it's gonna when you get into like the newer the part that hasn't been pulled it's gonna be a little stiff and then once you get those started then when you pull the next time it's gonna go a lot faster mm -hmm. so uh, you just keep pulling and pulling and get that all nice and um, gathered gathered up so let's look at this one and let's see if I can find my inner circle that I just had. It's a lot of gathering. Lots of gathering. Lots of gathering. Did they fall on the floor? If you um, have a baby lock serger, you can do this with a, um, is it a four thread overlock? And then you can pull your needle threads. Am I saying that right? For those of you that have a serger, when you're ruffling, you pull the needle threads. Uh, so if you're interested in doing the whole uh, ruffle idea on your serger, you can do that. Do that. Yes. But that's a different that's a different class. I haven't tried that yet. That's the, that's the only ex oh, that's experiment right. I did not try was yeah. to actually do it on my serger, was to ruffle it on my serger. Ruffling on the I serger have not done is it. very easy. Now it'll ruffle a little bit, and then you can pull your... Um, bobbin thread I mean your uh, needle threads needle threads is that right the needle threads am I saying that right you pull the needle threads and then it ruffles um, so that's that's a that's an option if you have a surgery you can do it all right there in one fail swoop okay PDF here we go next up this is where you've got it all ruffled yeah, this is where, and I'm using actually the wrong ruffle on here. This is the for the smaller size. So you're going to, since you've got your corners, your your quarters marked, then you can come back and go, okay, I need less ruffle. Wait, I'm not on that camera. Are you showing something? Yeah. Hang tight. This is where you're lining it all up. This is where you're lining it all up, and you're just going to take your quarters, mark it up with the ones on. You can mark your your design, and you're going to do right sides together, and you're going to just manipulate that ruffle so it is coming around and is lined up. See, now I have to pull a little more to get it good. And once you've got it, pin it or clip it. So we've got clips here. Use your wonder clips because, trust me, they are a wonder. And they will help you out a lot. Not to mention, especially when you're doing this um, gathering, um, because I didn't 
end up with so many holes poked in my fingers. That was nice. That was really nice. But you're just going to manipulate that around until you've got it just right. So it's kind of like find your quarters and then pull till you've got it good and pretty. And then once you've done all the way around, and you're going to do each one of these quarters the same way, pulling and lining up. Where's my next one? From there to there. And then you're just going to pull that all the way, well, the gather. Yeah, you actually want to start all the way at the end and do that because you've got to gather this all the way. That's what I... Finding those bob bobbin threads. I like the fact that I did it in black and I've taped them actually together. So, so again, you can pull threads. Let's see if I can pull the right two. Mm -hmm. I taped the ends just so I could do this. Yes, do you have a question? I did. That was, I did. I marked my embroidery pillow also at all four quadrants. In, in four quadrants so that I could get my ruffle. Again, that's a, that's a, also a me thing. I want that ruffle beautiful. So I want to know where, um, cause I don't believe they really discuss that. Um, but it makes your life a lot easier cause you know that you've got your ruffle, um, on there correctly. You're not spending so much time if you start, um, cause you can get one quadrant done and then move on to the next quadrant and know that that first one's done. You're not accidentally messing it up and things like that. So, um, that's the big thing there. The, the ruffle, it's actually a lot of fun to do. It just takes a little more patience and um it's one of those things where you just want to take your time and got that. so while you're doing that i'll go over to the powerpoint yep so what she is doing is she is laying the pillow center flat right side up and carefully place the border fabric right side down over the pillow, aligning the pillow raw edges with the gathered fabric raw edges. Yes. Be careful. As to be sure the border fabric is evenly gathered around the circumference of the pillow center. So that's what evenly Lisa's gathered doing now. She is evenly gathering it. And let's pretend with the magic of television that you have pinned it. You've uh, so this is what she's doing. She is. Flipper pin the sets of raw edges in place. So you've got your right. right sides down onto your, so right sides together. Right sides together at this stage. And you just clip it. And when you're working with the little pillow, the five by seven, um, it looks really awkward um, getting those right sides together. Uh, it, it just looks awkward, but again, it's right sides together, uh, and you kind of have to get it to the center, bunch it up into the center, just like that, where this outer line, it it was a little awkward to see at first, but right sides together, get that mass in the middle, and pull your outer ones to the outside. So let's see, just like that. Would so, these mini wonder clips help? Oh, any of the, yeah. The smaller the wonder clip, the better for this project because you want to leave them on there and you want to be able to get this under the machine to stitch. So where it comes in handy with the little ones, <clears throat> excuse me, is when you get to the stitching part. Um, my wonder clips were not as small as... These have just I, I, yeah, I suddenly realized that having different size wonder clips is just a dream. 
So the smaller the clip for this project, the Can better. You see the tip. The tip is smaller for these. And they even show on a sewing a curve. Fantastic for sewing yeah. a curve. These are fantastic. Okay, so let's go. So now you've got it where it's all lined up, evened. And again, you've got right sides together. So inside, there is your design. And here is the ruffle. And we're just going to sew it on. Again, I use that quarter inch foot um, to help guide all the way around that outer edge and get it right. Because again, I am used to having half or five eighths inch seams, not quarter inch. So to keep me lined up, that quarter inch foot did wonders. It kept me right where I needed to be. And then what you do, see, you're going to stitch that all the way around just like that and get it. And again, see, especially with the little pillow, look how much this back wouldn't be on there, but it, it's, it looks without those wonder clips, especially the small ones would be fantastic. Then you just go all the way around and you're just going to line that up with this outer edge. Okay. So that and, is step yep. number 10, sewing the border, quarter inch seam allowance, mm -hmm. and then you lay it out. Lay it out. Ruffle. This is where you've got your pressing cloth. You see the little iron with the green underneath it? That means you iron with the pressing cloth. Uh, and this kind of flattens out your bulk. Using a pressing cloth, press the front well. And we used the um, OESD pressing cloth. Oh, Definitely. they're fabulous. Carefully remove the basting stitches. You remember those basting stitches that we put in? For the ruffling, you want to take them out. You want to release those ruffles. So again, if you use the two different colors, now they're really, really visible and you'll be able to see them. Unlike this project where I didn't use <laughs> two different basting colors. And um, it's going to take me a while to get make sure I've got all of those basting colors or basting threads out versus if you had done them with different colors. Look, it's very easy to see which basting oh. color you can. And again, all you have to do is clip this black bobbin thread and, and it will start to release really, really easily. So if you use a different colored thread as your bobbin thread and as your top thread, it becomes really easy to pull them out. And you once you get that bobbin. On top of it when you stitch. I you're and stitching on this side. Yeah, you're stitching. But it doesn't catch those gathered stitches. I didn't have any, I, have, I haven't I have had issues with that. Especially when I've used a, a different colored bobbin thread where I could see it really easily. And if you cut the bobbin thread, so that would be my black thread in this particular one, um, it just it just comes undone. It's so easy to get it, get that out and it just comes undone. Especially once you've ruffled it, now you, you've got that where they're just kind of loosey-goosey in there. You just cut it and it pulls out. But by the by manipulating and doing the ruffle, you've allowed it a, a slightly larger uh, pull to just, it just comes right out. So that's what's really nice. So now you can see it and you can pull out all those bobbin threads. Gotcha. Then we go on to... You can change your, your foot out and use your zipper foot. Mm, are we putting the back on now? Now we're on the back. Attaching the zipper. Right. Do we have those lace zippers? You got two in your kit. You'll have, if you haven't purchased a kit, no worries. They are still available. Uh, these are the round pillows. You can go onto our website and purchase these kits. If you, um, in the kit, you will have two large blue rectangles. It says starch and press the two back fabric pieces. Which I did. I'm a huge <laughs> believer in starch. <laughs> best press. Best is press. your best friend. Best press. 
especially best press because it doesn't leave all that flakiness. Um, I, ha I tend to be heavy handed. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like. This is the zipper. Okay, where's the OESD pressing cloth? We've had these it out. OES. We've, we've had it OESD. out. OESD. Yes, let me and, show. Yeah, these Somebody are asked about the pressing cloth. So that is the. Um, these are great. Yeah, they're only five ninety nine, worth their weight in gold. Um, yes. The, you can also press out puckers and embroidery uh, sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Are the, um, the zippers, are they part of the kit? They're not part of the kit. So if you want a zipper, uh, you can get a zipper. Okay, so you can use a regular zipper, but we just got these in. This is the white ones, and so this is what Lisa has used. These are very hard to get. Kimber Bell has stopped making zippers, so that's why in all the kits... And if you read the instruction in the listing, no zippers were included because we weren't sure if we could get them or not. Okay, so and so you weren't charged for it. But this is the um, one that I would prefer because I'm not so great at inserting a zipper. So this is very forgiving. Very. Yeah. Uh, this These are 439. Beautiful little lace zipper. Uh, and this is the pressing cloth. Somebody was asking about the pressing cloth. This is the OESD. Pressing cloths. Yes. The zipper Correct. The zipper is not included in the kit. We do have them in stock now. Yes. So you weren't charged for it in the kit. There are no directions for putting the zipper in. Yes. There, there are. are zippers instructions. The, oh, I thought you said there were. Mm, there are. No, Kimberbell has stopped making the zippers. So therefore, they were a challenge to get. But we've got some. They are back ordered everywhere on the planet. Because Kimberbell stopped making them, and so every every supplier on the in the universe has uh, scrambling to get these so that people can make this project. But we fortunately were able to get some of these, and we even got some hot pink ones. So if you did it in a different color, yeah. it'd be fun to make it in hot pink. Hot pink. Okay. So know that these zippers are in. There are maybe only a few. So those of you in the store, y'all may luck out and get them. <laughs> but you can use a regular zipper. But you do so that's, because it's a twelve inch pillow you need a 14 inch zipper unless you I mean you can if you're savvy with putting in zippers you can do a five inch zipper because the pillows forms are really squishy you can put in a regular zipper I don't recommend it but it's possible it's possible it's possible but this this is what I would use because it's cute and it's easier much easier mm -hmm. okay back to the instructions so yes uh, Betty was asking do they not show us how to put in a zipper? They do. They do. Watch this. Okay. We're going to fly through this because we are almost up time for... Okay, so we're just going to zip, We're going to fly. Zip, zip. Yeah, we're going to fly. Fly. Okay, so follow the instructions. Step number two, number three. It's just folding. Folding Super over. Crazy simple. Yeah. Uh, crazy, crazy simple. That's where that best press and that iron come in handy. Using a sewing machine. Or, Top yeah. stitch the fold. Super simple. Just top stitch. Top stitch. Repeat the directions, steps one through four, on the remaining back fabric. So, easy. You're just sewing and stitching, sewing and stitching. Okay, here's your zipper. you got a right and a wrong side of your zipper. Be sure that the lace zipper is long enough to extend past the project edges. That is why I said 14-inch zipper for a 12-inch project. So, you place it right side down with the tip zipper pull. To the right. Place one piece of fabric right side down and you tape it with your Kimberbell tape because you can stitch over the Kimberbell tape and tape along, whoop, what does it say in yellow? Uh, tape along the entire edge. Um, yeah, yeah, I can tell you that's a really great thing to do. Uh, I was it's like, nah, I could do this. No, just tape along the entire edge, then, <laughs> you know, because it will get cattywampus on you. And I've got the proof, okay? So just tape all the way along that. Um, do one side at a time. Have only one side on at a time, uh, you know, before you start stitching. Uh, don't try and do both at the same time. Uh, do one and then come back and do the other. And use lots of Kimberbell tape. Or we've also got, this is another. There's no more? Can I have that one? Yes. Okay, sorry. We sold out of the white ones. Yep. They're all three. I thought we got more. Somebody must have bought some last night. Must have bought what? 
Man. We also have basting tape. Okay, this is another good tip that is not in the instructions. So take a look at um, what is in Lisa's hands. You can use basting tape to tape that edge onto that zipper. So you just put the basting tape. I put it on the zipper so I know exactly where it is. And then I come back and put that baste, put that fabric right over that, that basting tape. So uh, let's see if I've got a zipper right here. Now, we're, I don't have a pretty decorative one, but you're going to put that basting tape right along that edge and then come back. And so there it goes. Then you peel off the back and you're just going to take your fabric and put it right along. This would be, you know, all finished and pretty, right? And doubled right. over. And then you're just going to put it right along that edge and it's going to tape it all down for you so that um, when you get it under the foot, it's not moving. It is absolutely not moving. No. So, so that's an addition. Are not in the They're no, not in the kit. These are not in the kit. This stuff is fantastic, especially with zippers. Um, but this is actually, you know, you can do it with the Kimberbell tape. And the, the, the nice thing about these decorative zippers is that you are top stitching. Um, so you're just going to use your presser foot and you're just going to top stitch that down. Uh, again, I used a blue thread in this just so that you could see. And I did not put my tape. I got lazy, didn't put my tape, and I got Caddy Wampus. So tape it. Tape it, tape it, tape it. Tape it. Tape it. Tape it. <laughs> you can sew right over that. Oh, yes. You can sew right through the Kimberbell tape. You can sew right through the basting tape. Um This is basting tape. Yep, yes. there's the basting tape. By Annie's. Um, Annie's, yeah. We're going to use this for other things as well. Um, we got a, a project coming up where we're going to do, um, it's extra sticky. Very. Makes placing zippers, folding over elastic handles and straps fast and easy. Simplifies attaching trims and appliques. This makes, yeah, when it comes to zippers, this, this and tape are the greatest thing in the world. All right, so... We digress. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. We're flying, Lisa, we're flying. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. Okay, you do the, um, so this is what she just talked about. Turn the project right side up and the zipper pull should be to the left and sh then you top stitch. So that's then what Lisa stitch. just did. Then you top stitch. Carefully remove the Kimberbell tape from the back. As What does it say, note? A um, because foot is helpful. Is helpful. Um, now in here, they they want you to remove the Kimberbell tape because they do want you to actually um, move that zipper head. I'm not quite sure. Or they don't want you to have too much tape on the back. Uh, yeah, too much tape on the back. You used it. You don't need it anymore. Right. All right, so follow the instructions. Align the sides of the upper and lower pillow back fabric pieces. Tape along the entire edge. I love yep. how they put it in yellow. Again, tape That's, along you're the just entire edge. The, you're just sewing the other side. So that it doesn't move and get cuttywampus on you. Because, again, this is a very decorative zipper. You're going to see it, so you don't want it to go cuttywampus. Step number 11, turn the project right side up. Top stitch the other side of the lace zipper and fabric next to the zipper teeth. Easy. Same exact Easy. thing you just did before. Using your zipper foot. Follow the instructions. Place the back right side up on a flat surface. The zipper pull should be to the left. Do I love how they said where my zipper should be? At, do you notice how they said the zipper pull should be at a certain left or right at every instance? And you've got right and wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to go back a step. This is part number four. Do you see on the instructions we're part number four, step number one. I'm going to go back to step number 11 on part three. This is, see how the right sides are up on the fabric? I'm going to go back one more step. Do you see how that you can tell there's a right and a wrong side? That's the back side of the fabric. Okay, let's go back to where we were. We're sewing the pillow together. So we have this fabulous back to our pillow. And then all you got to do is sew the back to the front. We're, we're sewing another circle though, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So this is where I lined up my front. So again, those marking tabs, again, it's just me, those marking tabs 
came in handy to know that I had this lined up with my zipper. So it was all in line. So I marked there and marked there and I did the same thing and did it down there and there. So you could barely see still my mark right there. And I think you can barely see my mark still there. Um, and then all you're gonna do is sew that front, just lay it all out, smush it all out, get it all laid out. And then again, you're gonna follow the circle all the way around. What do you have here? This is confusing. Me. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh, folks. this has already got this the back, already on, got it. The back, back on, on it. Back on it. Oh, you're just simulating. Simulate, yeah. What you would do? Okay, what so I that's did. why I was like, "There's three layers here." Yeah, you're sorry just about that, folks. you're just simulating sewing the back on. You already have a back on. This I already project. have a back on this project. I'm following you. Okay, so you, normally you would just have a top, top, and a back, and a back, and you're sewing them together. So this one, I got gotcha you now. So. I don't think we used any kind of directional fabric. However, if you were using directional fabric for this, this is where you start to want to watch your directions. Um, watch your, your lightweight. I think that's why we made sure we didn't have directional that's fabric. That's why you buy a kit. That's why you buy a awesome. kit. <laughs> <laughs> the things you come across when you don't buy a kit, the things you don't think about, directional fabric and stuff like that. So... Um, okay, so you're sewing the front to the back. Let's just sew it right up. And I did go back and reinforce at my zippers. So I just reinforced right there. Oh, make wow. sure. And that's it. That's You are done. And then you so, cut the excess away. Cut it all off. You turn it inside out and you press it with your pressing cloth and you put in your pillow yeah. insert. Just... Lay your pillow, lay your, your cover on top of your pillow, just like that. Grab it, put it through, grab it, pull it through. Super. This is fun. And, and there you, it is. And this one you used a traditional zipper. This one I used a traditional zipper. Um... So what I do when I'm top stitching, I use my compact digital dual feed to, and use that stitch in the ditch sole because there's no way. Oh, your top stitching is fabulous. Do you see how I can run the edge of my blade? Do you see that black blade right there? I can run that blade along the edge of my fabric and move my needle over, boop, 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 move my needle to the left and get um, perfect top stitching. Perfect. <laughs> This is what I'm top right stitching. Over. It'll go, and so I'll be stitching. Let's pretend I'm stitching this. Can you see the blade? I don't need to scooch it over. But not inserting the zipper. This is for top stitching if you did it the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you see how I can move my needle over to the left? I may not get as close, as far away. Mine would be a little bit closer. Yeah, but I can just nice. Anyway, I love top stitching because uh, it makes me look like I know what I'm doing with the compact digital dual fee walking foot. So that's available on the Solaris Vision, on the Chorus, on the Ballad. And then if you've got an older machine, you've got the regular digital dual feed. Still has the same uh, different soles that you can get to change out. Absolutely worth getting that foot. Yes. What questions do you have? And then you can also get a stitch in the ditch sole for your regular. This is a regular stitch in the ditch sole. It's meant for quilting, right? Yep. But the beauty of it is... Uh, you can use it in multiple ways. Okay, what questions do y'all have? Facebook, you, yep, I see you. Somebody answered their own question. Uh, so the products that we're gonna use, that we use today, this afternoon, we are gonna start Comment Sold. Do y'all know what Comment Sold is? Comment Sold is an online selling platform and during COVID, everybody was doing Comment Sold. Like a lot of garment sellers, They'll hold up their cute little shirt and say, I'm selling this and I've got three of them. And then you can comment in your Facebook feed and say, sold 102. And so let's say, let's say this was number 102. You can say sold 102 and purchase this and then it'll pop up a little message on your screen and you can go to our website and buy it. So we're going to practice this afternoon. <laughs> so we will be live on Facebook with comments sold this afternoon. We're going to be selling all this stuff if we have any left in stock. And uh, so y'all get on there and just oblige us and comment. 
because we're going to be practicing. We're going. It's going to be a hot mess, but it'll be fun. <laughs> There is okay. The Instead question was it around it, what, on There is a that's a great question. So I'm gonna go over to the um, machine. What Karen was asking is if I wanted to um, do a basting stitch and I don't have my serger handy. How do I want to trim up my edges to make them neat and tidy? You know, Lisa has created uh, this this neat and tidy project, and we all want to be like Lisa. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, folks, I screwed this one up. <laughs> Searched all my edges. Okay, so this is um, the basting. I mean, the overcasting stitch. You see, it looks like triangles and uh, a line next to it. Let's see where to go, but it will tell you the the your machine will tell you like this one. Uh, I can use the end foot. That one will work, and then there is another one. This one, you can no, that's not it. Um, it will tell you to change to the. Um, there's an overcasting foot. Let me see if I can find it. There's a stitch that you'll want to use. That's the end foot. This one. There it is. 1 18, Karen. 1 18 is the overcasting stitch. And do you see how it says to change to sit foot number G? Letter G? Oh. It is an overcasting foot. Okay. How cool is this? 1 18. This is on the Solaris. It may be different on the chorus but you'll just have to look for it but it looks like that but it says change to the the to that um foot but you know you could also do um a zigzag stitch and it tells you what foot uh-huh and use. it tells you isn't that neat yes <laughs> <laughs> yes No, that's just a regular foot. So uh, that overcasting foot looks like one of your regular snap-on feet. Okay. So you have to do that first and then put your compact walking foot on? Yes, correct. Yes, and here's a quick tip for those of you that have a Solaris or a Chorus or something with the lights. Uh, turn on your lights so that you can get that perfect quarter inch seam. Do you see how I've got the red light and the green light? And I can adjust where my needle drop is going to be, which is the red line. And right now, my green line is at, my second red line is at a quarter inch. I absolutely love, um, so I would run my fabric. Can y'all see on there? I'm going to move it over so you can see, but I want to run my fabric along the edge of the outer red line. Let me change it to green. See, no, nope, that's my main line. Can change the colors. Can you see how I'm changing? Okay, so the green line is what I want to follow along with the edge of my fabric. Okay, so turn your lights on, move your seam over to, move your light over to a quarter inch. Now I can move that light further out if I want to, but in this project it's calling for a quarter inch seam. Fun? And then watch, this is going to be super fun. And I'll turn on the projector. So if I'm doing, if you've got a Solaris, you've got a projector. Do you see how I see my zigzag stitch right there? That's how I know how big my zigzag stitch is. So, and this one's big. Uh, I would want to decrease the width of that sucker because I don't need a big zigzag stitch to cover that edge. Nope. So, long story short. That's nice. Yeah. Isn't that cool how you can see the projector? Can y'all see that? Well, can you show where the projector light is on your on the machine? Yeah, so to turn on your projector, it's a cone of light. Do you see that? This is on the Solaris oh, yeah. Vision, Solaris 1, Solaris 2. That's your cone of light, and that is your laser light. So that turns on your two 
parallel lines and this turns on your projector so you can see this is the stitch that I've chosen um, that doesn't look very good let's change it to the overcasting stitch but look on the fabric now you can see how big that overcasting stitch is and to be honest with you I would want to adjust that and make it more narrow that's too big I don't need whoop, I'm okay. I would want to come over here to my stitch width and make it more skinny. Three and a half is, so you heard that knock mm -hmm. knock? It says that's as far as I can go. So let me go back over here. I think that's a good, yeah. good width. Yeah. And so that's what I would run along the edge of my fabric. Which I think that's exactly what I did on the serger. It was a three thread, three. And you did a three thread yeah, overlap? Yeah, three thread over, over a narrow hem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a Solaris, or if you want a Solaris, very useful. Okay. That is beautiful. Somebody says, great class. I need to get a water-soluble pen, a water-soluble thread, water-soluble marker, an OEC pressing mat, and a 14-inch lace zipper. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Uh, this was fun. Uh, we will go um, and try and do some comments sold to sell some of these products later. So if you want to hop on. Thanks for hanging with us. Two hours and 54 seconds. We did it. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, Betty's got a question. Yes. On the comment sold? Yes. No, it'll just be on our main Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not sure. I'm not sure. I'm going to wait for Amy to get here and put all these wonderful products up, and then we will go and play on comment sold and see how it goes. You should, yes, you have time to go home and eat lunch and be home. So you're good. Will you record it? It's not. Well, yeah, yeah, it'll be on our Facebook page. And it'll be, it'll go on to our, um, our website as well. And it'll, yeah, hypothetically, we haven't done this before. So I'm not sure. So it'll be fun. This is an experiment, so y'all bear with us. Should be fun. Okay, bye, everybody. Another high five, Lisa. Oh, my gosh, we did it. <laughs> Two hours and one Two minute. Hours. Oh my goodness. <laughs> see y'all later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Let's see if I can turn up. <laughs> Finish. Here we go. <laughs>